Good day everyone! This is a presentation all about Myra Estrin Levine and her theory. This is presented by me, Sherry Swanenberg, and my group mates Iad Milau and Kenneth Bardilias. So the agenda includes Myra Estrin Levine's biography in life, her theory of conservation, and her assumptions towards the concepts in the nursing metaparadigm. So first off, I will discuss Myra Estrin Levine's biography and life. Myra Estrin Levine was born in Chicago in the year 1920 and is the first child of three siblings as she had one sister and one brother and she also held a close relationship with her parents. It was her involvement throughout her father's persistent gastrointestinal illness that contributed to her interest in devotedness to nursing. As for her education, in 1944, she received her diploma in nursing in Cook County School of Nursing. In 1949, she continued to finish her Bachelor of Science in Nursing from the University of Chicago. And in 1962, she was granted with her Master's of Science in Nursing from Wayne State University in Detroit. So Levine was a regular presenter of programs, classes, courses, and councils, and was also a prolific writer concerning nursing and education. She worked as a consultant in different hospitals and schools of nursing and presented an organizational structure for teaching medical surgical nursing and a stimulus for theory development. In addition to her works, the Four Conservation Principles of Nursing was the first statement of the conservation principles. Her other works are Adaptation and Assessment, A Rationale for Nursing Intervention, For Lack of Love Alone, and The Pursuit of Wholeness. Levine is known for her publication, Introduction to Clinical Nursing, which was first published in 1969 with additional editions printed in 1973 and 1989, when she elaborated on how redundancy characterizes the availability of adaptive responses when stability is threatened. Levine also told others that she did not set out to develop a nursing theory, but had wanted to find a way to teach the major concepts in medical surgical nursing and attempt to teach associate degree students a new approach for daily nursing activities. She also wished to move away from nursing education practices that were strongly procedurally oriented and refocus on active problem solving and individualized patient care. As for her awards, she was granted with a Charter Fellow of the American Academy in Nursing in 1973, an honorary membership in the American Mental Health Aid to Israel in 1976, an honorary recognition from the Illinois Nurses Association, and was also a member of Sigma Theta Tau at Alpha Beta Chapter Loyola University, and also enlisted in Who's Who in American Woman from 1977 to 1988, and was also an elected fellow in the Institute of Medicine of Chicago from 1987 to 1991, and was the first recipient of the Elizabeth Russell Belford Award for Excellence in Teaching Sigma Theta Tau in 1977. Additionally, her book Introduction to Clinical Nursing received an American Journal of Nursing Book of the Year Awards, and her 1971 book Renewal for Nursing was translated to Hebrew. Levine was also awarded the Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters from the Loyola University of Chicago in 1992. So Levine died on March 20, 1996 on Hospice of the North Shore at Evanston Hospital at 75 years old, and her legacy is known as an administrator, educator, friend, mother, nurse, scholar, student of humanities, and wife. So for the following slides, I will introduce Levine's conservation model theory. Levine's conservation model believes nursing intervention as a conservation activity with energy conservation as the fundamental concern. It guides nurses to concentrate on the importance and responses at the level of the person. To simply put it out, the core of the conservation model is to improve a person's physical and emotional well-being by considering the four domains of conservation she set out. Nursing's role in conservation is to help the person with the process of keeping together the total person through the least amount of effort. There will be three different parts of this model. 
starting with the three major concepts in her conservation model theory. These are wholeness, adaptation, and conservation. Levine based her use of wholeness on Erickson's description as an open system. Levine quotes Erickson who states, Wholeness emphasizes a sound, organic, progressive mutuality between diversified functions and parts within an entirety, which is the boundaries of which are open and fluent. Levine believed that Erickson's definition set up the option of exploring parts of the whole to understand the whole itself. Adaptation, on the other hand, was described as a process of change where the individual retains their integrity with the realities of his internal and external environment. Next would be conservation, which is the ending product of adaptation, wherein the individual has been able to effectively adapt to the health challenges with the least amount of effort. This is the second part of her theory, which is the organismic response, wherein this is the capacity of the individual to adapt to their environmental condition. It is divided into the following four levels of integration, which are fight or flight, inflammatory response, response to stress, and perceptual awareness. The most primitive response is the fight or flight syndrome. Individuals perceive that they are threatened whether or not a threat actually exists. Individuals respond by being on the alert to find more information and to ensure their safety and well-being. Next would be the inflammatory response, which is a defense mechanism that protects the self from insult in a hostile environment. It is a way of healing, wherein this response uses available energy to remove or keep unwanted irritants and pathogens. It is limited and it drains the individual's energy. So, environmental control is important in this. Response to stress, on the other hand, is where the individual has hormonal responses to life experiences that cause structural change. It is characterized by irreversibility and influences the way patients respond to nursing care. The last would be perceptual awareness wherein this only occurs in individuals who experience the world around them. So, they use this response to seek and maintain safety. It is the ability to gather information and convert it to a meaningful experience. The core of the conservation model is to improve a person's physical and emotional well-being by considering the four domains of conservation she set up. These goals of conservation are achieved through interventions that attend to the conservation principles which will be discussed in the following slides. The first would be conservation of energy, which refers to energy input and output to avoid excess fatigue. It includes adequate rest, nutrition, and exercise. As for the conservation of structural integrity, this refers to maintaining or restoring the body's structure, preventing physical breakdown, and to promote healing. Next is conservation of personal integrity, which recognizes the individual as one who strives for recognition, respect, self-awareness, selfhood, and self-determination. Lastly, conservation of social integrity which exists when a patient is recognized as someone who resides within a family, a community, a religious group, an ethnic group, a political system, and a nation. Levine's Assumptions Towards the Nursing Meta Paradigm Person is a unique individual in unity, integrity, feeling, belief, thinking, and whole. Includes identity and self-worth refers to wholeness as the expression of all contribution of parts and systems. Environment Each person has his own environment, which includes internal and external factors. These are the three aspects of environment drawn upon Bates' classification. First is, the operational environment consists of undetected natural forces and that impinge on the individual. 
Second is the perceptual environment consists of information that is recorded by the sensory organs. And third is the conceptual environment is influenced by language, cultural ideas, and cognition. Health is the pattern of adaptive change of the whole being. Health is socially determined by the ability to function in a reasonably normal manner. Nursing is the human interaction relying on communication, rooted in the individual human being's organic dependency in his relationships with other human beings. Thank you for listening. This has been Kenneth Bardilas, Sherry Sonnenberg, and Ia Edmilau. Thank you so much for your interest and attention. We hope you have learned something from us today.